realise that the most difficult thing we do as scientists is to try to communicate with people who aren't trained in science. Um, we slip so easily into jargon. I'm assuming that you're not all trained in science. Tell me, tell me if you are all scientists, but I don't think you are. Um, we slip so easily into jargon, it's very easy for us just to, um, to lose everybody immediately by using one wrong word. So I'll try to avoid that. And what I would hope we can get time for is for you to talk to us, to ask us and tell us things, because really, I'll just reiterate the message that everybody's said so far, we're intensely grateful to you, not only for being here, and listening to us and trying to understand what science is all about, what gene therapy is all about, and for supporting the Cork Cancer Centre, intellectually, emotionally, and all that. But also, a lot of you raise money for the Cork Cancer Centre. We're very grateful for that as well, because if it wasn't for that, um, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we're trying to do. And I think it's fair to say that we're all in science because we want to do good for mankind. That's the weird thing about scientists. They are a bit strange when you get to know them, but deep down, they're all fundamentally well-disposed, and they want to use science in this case, to make better medicines. Now, can I just reiterate um, a word or two about gene therapy? Because we've said many things um, this, this evening. I'm not quite sure we've nailed down what is gene therapy. Norrie said chemotherapy is when you make toxins, uh, toxic agents, and you give them to people, and you try to kill the cancer cell, but their hair falls out at the same time, and they get all these toxicities. Radiotherapy, big death ray, you try to irradiate the tumour, and you try to kill the cancer by burning it out, but also it has lots of side effects. Um, immunotherapy, which um, Farzin will probably talk about, and um, 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 is, is, is where we're trying to stimulate the immune system, and this has a much better ability to be selective for the cancer. So if we can, if we can make immunotherapy succeed, and it was interesting to hear Al Dizaroth talking about his life's work and encapsulating, he's a leading vaccinologist, he talked about his life's work and called it the little green thing. I thought that was a <laughs> wonderful way to communicate um, so many years' work. And it's green because it's Ireland. You do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's gene therapy. Now, gene therapy, we think, is the big step forward that should allow us to achieve what we're trying to do without all the toxicities that we've seen for cancer therapies over the last 50 years. Now, in its simplest form, gene therapy is when we're trying to use the genes to treat genetic diseases. You probably know very well that the simplest genetic diseases are things like haemophilia, cystic fibrosis, um, immune deficiencies, things like this, where somebody, for example, has got problems with factor 10 or factor 9 or factor 8. It means that they can't make blood clotting proteins because they've got a single mutation in their, in their DNA that means that they have this protein that doesn't work properly and they can't clot their blood. So gene therapy is where you give a normal copy of the gene to replace the deficient one, and you can hope to, I hate to use the word that begins with a C, but you hope to cure those patients because you're removing the problem, you're not just treating the symptoms. So that's what gene therapy really is in its simplest form. But cancer, as Nari said, is also a genetic disease, and cancer is a bit different from other genetic diseases because it only arises after you've acquired six or seven different mutations. So whereas haemophilia is just one mutation, you can fix it. With cancer, it's a much bigger challenge because you require six or seven before you get the disease. So at one level, we think, well, we can use DNA and we can try and replace all those broken bits of DNA. And we are trying to do that. And actually, we can make pretty good progress just by replacing one or two of them. And that's one side to gene therapy. But the other side, as Nori said already, is for us to use DNA in a more imaginative way by making cancer-killing viruses. Now, normally we think of viruses as terrible things. Al has already mentioned swine flu virus. Viruses are bad things. We know they're bad things. We've, we've lived with them for millions of years, and we know that they're pathogens. Our bodies are well defended against viruses, and here we now have these crazy scientists saying, actually, we can use viruses to treat cancer. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? Well, the point is that when you have a cancer arising within your body, Cancer is basically a growth of cells that gets out of control. It picks up these mutations. And a hallmark of cancer is that it loses its local immune system. This is also what Al said. The immune system tends to break down when you have a cancer. And if you think about it, what would happen if you put a pathogen into a cancer? Now, we're all defended against pathogens in the environment because we have immune systems. But if you're saying that the immune system in the cancer is not very good, and it has to be not very good, otherwise the cancer wouldn't survive, then maybe the cancer can't defend itself against 
a pathogen, a bacterium or a virus. And Mark actually may well talk to you about bacterium sometime because that's his speciality. But we're working on, on cancer-killing viruses. And if you can get something like a common cold virus actually into a tumour, you can have a very good effect. I'm just going to show you one or two slides. Um, oh, that's the wrong one to press. That's the wrong one to press. Just, uh, I'll just Maybe I'll, I'll do it from here. Yeah. <laughs> Regular, um, I won't dwell on it very much, but this is something like the cold virus. It's quite small. It's about 90 nanometers, which is, what's that, 100 nanometers to the tenth of a thousand nanometers, which is, it's quite small, anyway. <laughs> Um, and the key thing about it is it's got some DNA in it. And of course, when you say DNA to a gene therapist, you think, well, that might be useful as a way to, to spread therapeutic DNA. So we actually engineer these things to have our therapeutic DNA inside them. That's what it does in the way it infects cells. I won't go into this because um, I think it's, you find it a bit boring. This is what a virus does in our therapeutic setting. So here's a virus infecting a range of different cells, normal cells shown in pink, cancer cells shown in brown, and because the virus is only able to proliferate in cells that have got deficiencies in their immune defences, it replicates selectively in cancer cells. And this virus actually lyses the cells and moves to infect adjacent cells. So it will actually spread its way through solid tumours. And it's such a beautiful thing because if we can make this work, we can actually have a chemotherapy approach, because this is effectively chemotherapy, which amplifies itself within the tumour. There's no other chemotherapy that does that. That's why your hair falls out when you take a chemotherapy drug. But if you have a chemotherapy drug that can amplify itself only within the tumour, you've got a real step forward. Um, and this is some of the early clinical data. Uh, this is from um, a company called Onyx, who made a virus which does exactly this. Um, and they injected it into this head and neck cancer um, in a person with head and neck cancer. And they, this is another tumour nodule here. Uh, this is in somebody's neck. Um, and you'll see that in the nodule that was injected with the virus, after three weeks, there was a complete disappearance of the tumour. Um, there's no more tumour there at all. But in the one that wasn't injected, it's still there. It has no effect at all. So the message is you need to get the viruses into the tumours, and then you have a chance of doing something good. And this is the most dramatic one. I'm sorry, it's a bit gross, but this is a very big head and neck cancer. Onyx injected a virus directly into this tumour, and after three cycles, so three sets of treatment, even that enormous tumour disappeared. Now, you might think, well, okay, Bob's your uncle, we'll just inject viruses into all our tumours when we, if and when we get them, and that'll be fine. The problem we have, oh, let me go through all this stuff without dwelling on it. The problem we have is that clinical cancer that does you in is a metastatic disease. It's spread around the body. So this, these are just images of different types of cancer. This is melanoma, and you can see in this person the melanoma is spread throughout the body here. This is prostate cancer, which is metastasized around the body. It's spread everywhere. I'm sorry this is so gory, but this is a, somebody's liver full of testicular cancer that's spread to the liver. This is somebody's liver full of... If we're going to use these viruses effectively, we have to be able to give them throughout the body. And that's really what we're focused on in Oxford, which I won't dwell on in any detail, other than to say that the way we're doing it is we're taking our viruses and we're giving them a little protective coat to protect them against the bloodstream, against all the antibodies they'll see in the bloodstream, just to allow them to get as far as the tumour. And once they can infect the tumour, we hope and we begin to think we will see the same activity that we get when we inject it directly into the tumour. So that's what we're up to. I won't go through any more because it goes on far too, far too long. But um, that's all I wanted to say. But really, thank you very much for being here, and I hope you get the chance to ask us loads of questions.